really gone. <laughs> so I've got to do two messages in 45 minutes, which is not very, not very, not very long time. But um, um, let's trust God that He will, we will get through everything that He wants us to do. Let us just pray. Um, let's lift our hands, Heavenly Father. We just want to thank you that we are together. That you, your presence is here. Lord God, your grace is with us. You love us. Lord, the kingdom of God is advancing. We want to thank you, Lord God, that um, we are your family, Lord God, that represent you here on the earth, here in the UAE, and wherever we go, Lord God, your kingdom comes. And we want to ask you, Father, that as we look at foundations tonight, and as we look at the book of Colossians, we want to pray, Lord God, that your words will achieve its purpose in our lives Lord God, we pray right now, open our hearts to receive your word. Let it bring life. Wherever your word comes, Lord, it brings life. And we open our hearts right now. Holy Spirit, speak to us. Holy Spirit, strengthen us and anoint us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. And so I'm going to start, if we could just have the, the first slide up. There's another slide before that. And I do want to say thank you for the support for Tanzania. I had no plans to go to Tanzania, but it seemed like God had a plan for me to go to Tanzania. I had a call from some guys in the U.S. They said, we're going to Tanzania. We'd love you to come with us. They also invited some other people. And um, at a short notice, we really said, we'd love to take, we need Bibles. Most of the people in Tanzania, it's very difficult for them to get a hold of Bibles. It's expensive for them. And so we just made two notices, and we said, we need Bibles. And I was amazed. We got 16,000 dirhams. And just from City Gates alone, we were able to buy 600 Bibles. And 150 of those were children's Bibles. And you saw the orphanage we went to. Every child in that orphanage got a Bible. We gave Bibles to the church we were involved with. And 300 pastors got Bibles, beautiful Bibles, it was just amazing, and they, was, they were so excited to receive the Word. Some of them, can you believe, even some pastors never had a Bible because they just memorized from what they've heard. Can you imagine? Can you imagine that? But so the Word has gone into Tanzania, and it was also amazing. We did, I just thought, I thought we have a few churches in Tanzania. When we got there, there are 30 churches that are part of regions beyond and so God is on the move in, um, and that's doubled since the first church came in. So it was around 13 churches in 2019, and, and now it's 30 churches. And you can see some of those are in places like Zanzibar and that coastal region where there's a lot of Muslims, strong Muslims in that place, but we're seeing God break through. And so I'm excited about East Africa. You can see at the top, you can see Mwanza. Uh, just above there is Lake Victoria. At the top of there is Uganda. And, we, you know, we planted, we have two churches in Uganda, which is also new this year. And so we're really trusting God to do great things in East Africa. And I believe this is just the start of many trips there. So thank you so much. On behalf of the churches there, they really were impacted. So, you know, well, well done. I'm sure some of you are going to sign up for when the next trip that goes to um, Uganda or to Tanzania. Amen. So we're, we're pressing on with foundations. Why are we doing, you can put the timer on now, 20 minutes. No, no, forget that was the, that was just, that was the previous notice. So 20 minutes for foundations and 20 minutes for the book of Colossians. And then a little bit of a disclaimer, I'd love us to end today by praying for us to be clothed in the Holy Spirit. It just felt amazing during the worship that, you know, the presence of God, I mean, I mean, it, sh it shouldn't be amazing, right? This should be normal. But the presence of God, God was highlighting to us that he wants to fill us, he wants to clothe us with his presence. And I believe that the message tonight, in a way, oh, I need that bag as well, Liz. You can just put it here. I believe the message tonight is, is all about us being clothed in God, clothed in Christ, clothed in the Holy Spirit. And, um, well, that, that's the, the later part. 
when we come to Colossians. The first part is about foundations. But even as we look at foundations, we find this in Luke 24, um, right at the end of Luke 24. Um, where, where are we? Verse 44, these are the, my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things which are written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and he said to them, thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise again from the dead the third day and repentance for forgiveness would be proclaimed in all the nations starting in Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And then he says this amazing verse, 49, and behold, I am sending forth the promise of my Father upon you, but you are to stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Clothed. How many of you want to be clothed in the Holy Spirit? God's calling us to be clothed in the Holy Spirit. And, um, you know, we're going to look at Many things that God wants to clothe us with. But this is just before Acts chapter 2 when the disciples are waiting in the upper room and in Acts 1.8 he says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses. And then wham, bam, the Holy Spirit comes down. They are clothed in the Holy Spirit. Fire comes on them. There's a sound that comes in. They start speaking in tongues prophesying, and the church is born in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, that should tell us something. God never meant us to have church without the Holy Spirit. Are, are you with me? It's inconceivable that we would have church without the Holy Spirit. And so whatever we do has to be full of the Spirit. It has to be full of the Word. And even to have a church that says, okay, we're, we're the Word church but, you know, that Holy Spirit stuff, we don't want any of that. You know, it's word and spirit because where the word is, unless you're preaching the wrong word, <laughs> the spirit is there, right? And so we're to be clothed. So as we look at foundations, we need to understand this. Why are we looking at foundations? Well, there's two words. We can go to the next slide and we see there's two words that come in, in the scriptures. Acts 2, 41 when the Spirit came, Peter preaches, and he says, repent and be baptized. And it says around 3,000 people were what? Added. They were added. Now, that word added is important. We are doing the course in a couple of weeks, but we're also doing the teaching right now as well. So this is the teaching from the added course. And if you are added to something, it means that there's a weight that's, be, that's come into it. You've been added. You're putting your full weight, your full, your full, your heart, all of your heart, your talents, your gifts. You're putting everything that you are. You've been added into something, and so when you're added into the church, it's something that's significant. And so, as we look at foundations, God wants every person in City Gates to put their full weight behind what we are doing. And then there's another word which I love. In Acts 2, 42, it says that they were devoting themselves or they were continually devoting themselves to the Word of God, to the teaching, to the breaking of bread, to the fellowship, to prayer. They were devoting themselves. And I love those two words. You are added into the church and you are de continuously devoting yourself. So why are we doing foundations is because we want everyone in city gates to understand what we are building here. And over the, we've been on a journey, you know, two years ago, we came together, there was, there was two churches, we came together and we've got people who've done the foundation course in Gateway, there's people who did the foundation course in City Hill, there's people who've joined us. And so we wanna make sure that every single person is, understands that you, there's a foundation of what God is building in this church so that we can be all that God's called us to be, amen? And so if you are going to put your full weight, fully added and fully devoted, you need to know that we have a foundation. The second reason is this, is that we have, we have an enemy who wants to, he doesn't want us to have strong foundations, right? And so Jesus says these words, 
Without foundations, we can easily be swept away. It's like a man who builds his house on the sand because there's not really solid ground. And so if you're building your house on the sand, you know, well, the, the winds come, the rain comes, the sea comes, and whatever you try and build on that sand, it's not going to last because it will just sweep it away. But he says, I will tell you what a man is like who takes my words and takes the Scripture, takes the Word of God and builds his life on the words of Jesus. He is like a man who puts his foundation and builds his house on the rock. The rains may come, the, the storms may come, but it will, it, it will remain. Amen? And so that's why we need foundations. You can go, I think we've passed that slide, we can go on to the the next slide. And so we must be devoted, we must be added into the church, and I love this Luke 24, it is because we've got to be clothed in the power of the Holy Spirit to fulfill the purposes of God. And so when we look um, at this scripture, you will see some of the key words added, devoted, a true sense of awe, Jesus was elevated, a strong togetherness, all things in common, they continued with one mind. They were bro break, bro broke bread house to house. There was dynamic praise and worship. There was growth on a daily basis. And they were all in awe of God and Jesus was elevated in their midst. They're just a few key things from that passage. Now, I don't know about you. I want to be a part of a church that has all of those elements. I want to give myself fully to the church and I want to know that the foundations that we have are strong. And we know that when God builds his house, he does things well, doesn't he? And none of you are added, added into a church by accident. Now, sometimes parents will say, I had a child, it was by accident. You know, believe me, it was no accident. <laughs> They may not have planned to have a child, but it was no accident. Are you with me? In the kingdom of God, there are no accidents. Now, your parents might not have planned you, but God planned you before the foundation of the earth. Amen? And so we have to understand there are no accidents in the kingdom. God planned and purposed for you to be born into this family, the family that you are in, whether physically, but also the church family, and that together we would build his kingdom. Amen? And so we see, next slide, we see that God's heart for us was to restore us vertically with him. So we had to be restored with him in relationship. The Bible says that we were aliens from, alienated from God. We had no possibility of relationship. But not only alienated from him, but mankind was alienated from one another. And so the cross... The gospel was all about restoring relationship in two ways. And without restoration with God first, there cannot be re restoration with fellow human beings. Because the problem is sin, and the sin only gets dealt with as we are restored with, to relationship with, with God the Father and the, the Son and the Holy Spirit. And so we restore to him first, and then there is possibility and so you see two ways. We are reconnected with God. We are added into the Lamb's book of life, but we are also baptized into the body of Christ. We are part of his church, and we are devoted. We are devoted because we are part of the family of God, and there's nothing else we can do because that's, we are his children. And so children are devoted to the, the parents, and we are devoted to our Father in heaven. So he restores us. And so what we see, God's plan is for the church to be a place where we grow together, we pray, we worship, we learn the Word of God, we serve together. And those three elements are so important. This is God's plan to help us to grow, to help us to, to walk in his to walk in his character as we walk with one another, as we serve in the church, we find that some of the rough areas that haven't quite been dealt with yet, God begins to 
deal with those things in our heart. We learn the word together. We worship. We learn what it is to worship. We learn what it is to speak in tongues. We grow in the word. We grow in the anointing. And as we serve, we are transformed. How many of you know that serving God and serving the church, serving his purposes, will transform you? Amen? It says this, Ephesians 4, 16, the whole body fitted and held together as each part does its work causes growth. There's growth in the body as it builds itself up in love. How do we grow? We grow by serving. And that's two heroes in the Bible. And I I love the fact that Philip and Stephen were those that gave themselves to the church. And it didn't matter what they were doing. But, you know, when there was a request, I want people to serve food to the widows especially for the Greek widows, they said, we want to be involved in that. And it didn't matter what the task was, their heart was to serve. Next, we see Stephen is preaching the gospel to the Sanhedrin, and we also know that he was martyred as well. But that did not go in vain because Paul was there witnessing. And Stephen's death had such a powerful effect That even later on, Paul speaks about how it changed him and undid him when he saw um, when he saw Stephen, and so it's an amazing thing. And Philip, who's waiting on tables one minute, the next minute he's preaching the gospel in Samaria, and then he's transported by the Holy Spirit, and then he speaks to an Ethiopian eunuch who goes on and takes the gospel to to East Africa. Amen. And so we can be serving on tables, serving foods in city gates that is a blessing to go to South Africa and those seeds can do something in us and also in Africa. Who knows what God can do with you when we fully commit our hearts. And so foundations are so important. The church we go to and the area we serve in in the church has nothing to do with our personal preference. Are you with me? It has nothing to do with our personal preference. 1 Corinthians 12 says this, but now God has placed the members, each one of them, in the body just as he desired. Amen? That means he, it's not about whether I like the worship band, whether I like the preacher, whether I like the coffee or the biscuits they serve afterwards. Or whatever it is, the reason why we might first get attracted, it might be the girls or it might be something else. You heard people telling testimony, I only went to church for for the girls that were there. Whatever the reason is, God has a plan and a purpose, and he wants us to really understand, is this where he wants me to be? And then it doesn't matter who, who is preaching and who, you know, how good the preacher is or how good the worship team is, if that's where God wants you to be, then that's where you're going to grow. Give yourselves fully to that church because that's the way that we grow through serving and that's the way God opens up. And so Philip thought, I'm just waiting on tables. The next minute he's an international evangelist preaching in Samaria, preaching to Ethiopians. Who knows what God will do to you when you just give yourself to serve him. So the church is a tool of the Holy Spirit. As we step out, the Holy Spirit will anoint us and he will use us and who knows where you will end up. But we trust God. He's in control about the when and the how. But as we give ourselves the anointing of God, and we might have natural gifts We might have spiritual gifts from the Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter what gifts they are as long as we use them for his kingdom and his anointing will come on us and that anointing will grow. Amen? And so that's the church. This is God's plan for the church, for people to be added from different walks of life and nations. And so next slide, we will see all of these different areas that we have in city gates. Forgive me if I've missed the area that you're in. This is just a list. That I, that I wrote down, but these are areas in city gates where I want to say to you, what is the area that you are serving in? Because if you are not serving, you are missing out on God's purpose for your life. 
And so I want to say it's God's purpose. Now, you won't find it in the words exactly like this, but I want to say to you it's God's purpose that you find an area in city gates to serve in and to give yourself fully into that area. If you're not doing that, I would say you're disobedient (laughs) and you are missing out on something that God has got for you. Whatever it is, ask him to show you where. Now, I know many of you are serving and some are serving in in more than one, some even more than three or four areas. And I want to say thank you for that. God will bless you and anoint you. Amen. And so we find this. In the kingdom, there is grace to be saved, but there's also grace to serve. You get saving grace and serving grace. And so when they were looking for those who were waiting on tables, they looked for those that were full of faith, full of grace, and full of the Holy Spirit. Stephen and Philip and And five others gave themselves because that task was such an important task about building unity and helping the poor, the widows. And it's understood that there were around 600 widows in the church in Jerusalem that the early church was looking after. And they were just the widows. They had a whole system for for understanding how how they would support widows and how they would, you could read about it in a a very old book called the, the Dak. And you'll find that they help the poor. And that's something as something close to our heart. One of the ministries that Sony leads is our work amongst the poor and others with him. But we're so grateful. Uh, you see, Joseph, he was serving in Potiphar's house. Because he was serving, he goes from prison. From the prison, in the, even in the prison, he was serving serving the prison guards, and the next thing we know, he's in the palace. Serving opens the way for God's kingdom purposes and the ministry he has for your life. Serve whatever God has put in your hands, whatever God has tasked he's given to you to do, serve with all of your heart. There are no shortcuts in ministry. And we find this, Jesus says, Matthew 23, the greatest among you must be as the one who serves. We want to walk in his purposes. Jesus says, I come among you as one who serves, and he modeled serving the disciples when no one else wanted to wash the feet. Jesus says, I've come to serve and give you an example, because as we serve, as we go to Tanzania, we went to serve and bless the people. And believe me, understanding serving and understanding being added to the church and giving yourself, um, you will find God's purposes. Wow, where is the time going? (laughs) Uh, Mission. Um, Sorry, next one. Commitment to diversity. I need five minutes. Um, Commitment to diversity. As a church, God has called us to build a diverse church. Amen? Amen? Dubai, I love Dubai. I think, you know, I lived in London. London was very diverse, but it was all spread out. There were people from the nations. What I love about Dubai is you can have a neighbor from China, a a neighbor from Syria, a neighbor from Jordan. You can have different nations so close together. I love the diversity. I love the different types of food. But I, I love what God is doing in city gates, that he's called us. The last time we met, we had 72 nations. I am sure that that's going to increase by the time, and it has already increased, I know, but I don't know how many. The next time we meet, and I love that. And we see that in Revelation it says, by his blood he has purchased men, uh, men and women for God from every tribe, tongue, language, people, and nation. Revelation chapter 5, verse 9. I love that. And I wanna, we, we want to build a church that is united, but also as diverse as possible. And we believe in building a church that's diverse as possible, that shows us who God is. Because God is this amazing God who's full of creativity, creating. I mean, we, you just look at creation and you see some of the crazy animals that he has created. 
And then we look at people and we see short and, and fat and small and, and, and all are beautiful. But <laughs> you see, there's different shapes, colors, languages. And this is God's heart. And when we come together, only in the church this can happen. Because by his blood at the foot of the cross, we are equal before him. Amen. And nations are fighting all around us, but in the church of God, we, you, know, you know that we have Ukrainians and Russians that meet on Saturday afternoons. God is good to us. He is good. And this proclaims the gospel um, wherever we are. And so God's called us to be a church that is missional. Now, mission is not just about the mission trips. You understand me? It's not just about mission trips. Because if it was only about mission trips, we would be missing, 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 missioning, missing what God's called us to do in this city. Your family is meant to be a mission family. The moments that we have together when we gather here is a mission moment for God to come and break through in someone's life. We are meant, our small groups, our city groups are meant to be mission stations where we're praying for people. Your workplace is your mission assignment where you are meant to witness about what God's done in your life throughout the week. Are you with me? God's called us to mission. It's not just to go to South Africa, but it's here every day. We are God's chosen vessel to use us and anoint us in this city. Amen? Okay. I'm going to have to move on to the next bit now. Um, but that's fine. Um, I could talk about the gospel and the Holy Spirit. You all believe in the gospel and you all believe in the Holy Spirit. But I'll leave something for Fuzzy to do next week. So he's going to pick up where I left off. And if we don't finish everything, then we have, may have to add a week. I don't know. But we needed God to change us. The gospel is so powerful you and I are here because we heard the gospel. The gospel was preached to us. We were dead in our sins, but the gospel came. None of us are here because we earned our place or, we, or we, because we did anything righteous. It was totally an act of God's grace. And because of what he did on the cross, he showed us his love for us. And he is the one that chose us and showed us that we needed him. And as he revealed himself to us, he gives us the gift of faith and repentance. And that in itself is not something that we did on our own. It was the work of the Holy Spirit, and he revealed himself to us. And many of us, we know that on the day of, on the day of Pentecost, when Peter preached, he stood up and he said, repent each one of you and be baptized. Baptism is something for every believer. It's part of our repentance repentance, and it's part of what it means of, to being added into a local church, amen? It's part of the calling, and it's there in Scripture. It's something so key for us, amen? Okay, so I'm going to move on now into the second part. Everybody knows why we need good foundations. Come here, here and Amen. We need good foundations, we need to be added, we need to be devoted, we need to find a place to serve. God's called us to mission, we believe in the gospel, every one of us needs to be baptized in water, but also baptized in the Holy Spirit. So turn with me now to the book of Colossians, Colossians chapter 3, I'm picking up from verse 12, where Jacob left off last week, was verse 11. And so we're going to read this scripture. It says this, Colossians chapter 3. Where are we? For some reason, I'm looking at it, but... <laughs> There we are. Sorry, verse 12, verse 12, that's what I'm getting. I'm looking at verse 11 and it's verse 12. So let's read that, verse 12. So as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, 
humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving each other. And, and whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. Beyond all these things, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you, with all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Whatever you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Amen. And so we know that last week Jacob spoke about from verses 1 to 11 what it means to have been put, born again. The fact is that we have to put off the old self. We put off the old self which was dead with all of its old ways and practices, sinful tendencies. It was an old man and as we received Jesus, there was a putting off of the old man. And we're told to put on Christ, be clothed in Christ, put on Christ. There's a new life which he has given to us in the gospel. And so each one of us has been transformed as we have put in Christ. And I think that's one of the amazing things about the book of Ephesians. It's all about this new life which he's given to us. And remember Jacob said we've got a new mindset, a new mindset Christ and the life of Christ is now our goal. Pursuing him and pursuing a relationship with him is our goal. So our walk with him means that we need to walk with intentionality by constantly putting away the old grave clothes. And we know that inside God has done something in us, but often there's still a temptation to put on the old clothes that we used to walk in. Are you with me? God has given us a new set of clothes and he's changed us on the inside, but we have an enemy that wants us to keep putting on the same old suit that we used to wear. And so that, that is something that, that is there. The enemy will try to get us to respond in anger, get us to respond in malice, get us to respond with wrong attitudes, but that is not who we are anymore because now we are new in Christ, we are new on the inside, and so now we have the possibility of putting on these new attitudes. And now there are four things in this passage, which we're going to quickly look at, which show us that we've been changed on the inside, that we are now in Christ, we've put off the old self, and now we've put on Christ. And if you like, these are four things which will show that we are truly His, and that He has done a work in us. And so we are called, number one, to recognize who we are. We have a new identity. We are in Christ. And now a sign of that is our attitude towards others will have changed. And so we're told to put on hearts of compassion, put on kindness towards others, put on humility, because pride is dead now and we know that we're only saved by grace, not by our own endeavor. We put on gentleness towards people, even though, because we know how difficult we, we can be. We forgive others easily. We bear with one another. We bear with the failings of others because we know that we ourselves once were weak. And lastly, it says this, over all these virtues, we put on the overcoat of God's love. And so we put on humility, we put on compassion, gentleness, kindness, we bear with one another, we forgive one another easily, and on top of all that, God wraps us with this huge overcoat of his love. And that is the crowning virtue of them all. Now many people try to be good, many people try to put on these things, and it's a bit like, it's a bit like taking these virtues, and I want to put on some of them now, and putting them on, but actually, it's difficult, you know, it's because I find kindness is there, but I find that there's, there's some other things, there's wrath in me, 
And so if I try and put kindness there, but actually I've got a wrathful heart, then it's not going to stick. It's like me trying to be good, and all the religions tell us, come on, be kind, be good, do this. But in the heart that is wrath, then it's not going to stay, is it? It's not a lasting change. And so the sign of, well, we'll come, come to that a bit later. So I put on kindness, but it doesn't stick. Got stuck. Okay. And then, oops, I try to put on compassion. There is compassion. I don't know what side I'm meant to put this. Compassion. But I find, ooh, there's something else in my heart. There's something else. Slander. Oh, how can I be compassionate when I've got slander in my heart? Are you with me? And so we're trying to put on these virtues, but the problem is it doesn't stick because I've got these other things on. So first, we have to put off the old self. We have to put these things, and that's a picture of salvation. Let's throw it away. We put off the old self, and I've got to remove wrath. Okay, I'm trying, trying to remove it, but it's stuck on the mic. Okay, that's a bit funny, isn't it? So I'm taking off anger. I'm taking off all of these things. I'm taking off obscene talk. I'm taking off malice. I'm taking them off. It's trying to stay on me, but we'll take the mic off later. It's okay. It, it's gone. It's okay. Oh, you can... You, it's stuck on the, on the... But we find this. We have to be made new on the inside. Are you with me? If we try and put on compassion, we try and put on humility, we try and forgive others, we try to be loving towards others, but all of these things are in our hearts, then it's not going to stick. And so Colossians tells us, first, we have to be made new on the inside. Are you with me? And when we are new on the inside, and my wife helps me to do that, <laughs> as well as the Holy Spirit and God. Is it really stuck? Okay. We've got to be made new on the inside. Amen? And so, yes, it's... it's you see how difficult it is sometimes to get these things off. We try and be humble. We try and be compassionate. But that attitude just keeps coming back. And... But we've got to make sure that we are fully new on the inside. And then we find this. Compassion. Ooh. I can put compassion. You see, like a handbag. I have a compassionate handbag. I put on gentleness and humility. You see? Now it's all, it's all stuck together. I put on gentleness and I put on humility, and I put on kindness. Now you see, now it will stick because I'm new on the inside. Amen? Now not only that, and I was trying to think, the Bible says that we need to be clothed in Christ. And so these are some of the things that Christ is kind, Christ is humble, Christ is loving. But it's just a picture. It's a picture. But actually now, in Christ Jesus, I was trying to think about the best, which country has the best cultural dress that would remind me of an angel. And it has to be the Philippines. And so we see, I'm going to put on, this is a symbol of putting on Christ. You see, I've put on Christ, I'm made new on the inside, and inside my heart now, I've got kindness, I've got humility, and now I'm clothed in, I'm clothed in Christ. Can you see that? How do you like that, our Filipino friends? I'm clothed in Christ. And this is a picture, an angelic picture, I have to say, of what God does in us when we give ourselves to him. And so inside my heart, I now have kindness and compassion and humility. I'm clothed in Christ. It's not difficult. 
for this to happen because God has done it in me. It's not me trying to do it myself, but I'm clothed in Christ and I'm clothed in the Holy Spirit. Does it remind you, this list, does it remind you of anything? It should remind us of Galatians 5.22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And as we walk in the Spirit, and as we are clothed in the Spirit, we will find these fruits, these attitudes, will constantly be producing from our heart because the life that is in us, He that is in us, is greater than He that is in the world. Amen? And so we find Christ on the inside will produce this harvest of righteousness, these fruits of the Spirit. We don't have to make the fruits grow. The fruits will grow on their own. As we continue to clothe ourselves in Christ, we are clothed in Christ. We are made new on the inside. But the Scripture tells us, continue to clothe yourselves. Continue to be clothed in Him. Now, on the day of Pentecost, when Jesus told them previously, we want, I want you to wait in Jerusalem so that you will be clothed in the power of the Holy Spirit. Those early disciples knew that they were fully clothed in God, clothed in His presence, clothed in His attitudes, clothed in His power. But also that Holy Spirit that was put in them continued, they continued to be filled with the Spirit. And on a continuous basis, the Spirit now became a part of their lives. And I can just imagine Jesus sitting in heaven. And, you, know, you know that He's omnipresent as well, so He can be there and seated in heaven. But just bear with me. He's, he's pouring out the Spirit upon the church the moment that He's been waiting for when His presence would be with the disciples. Amen? Forever and ever. I can imagine how excited the Father and Jesus were. Can you imagine that? It's amazing. So, one of the ways that we continue to put on the right clothing is that we keep coming to Him and asking Him to fill us with the Holy Spirit. Amen? And so that's something we've got to keep, keep doing. This mic, I'm having a battle with this mic. It's okay now. I think I've sorted it. Okay, Romans 12 says this. We are not to be conformed to the things of this world. And so we don't just do, ah, I've jumped into the next, the next point. Number two is this. And so we find that we're putting on compassion. We know that we are His because of our, the way that we respond to others is not the way that we used to respond. And even if we get it wrong, sometimes we are quick to ask for forgiveness and God restores things. And so it's not to say that we are perfect all of the time. We can make mistakes, but we know we know that God has got us on a journey and He's changing us and He's transform, and transforming us. And we're not, we're not what we used to be. We know that there's another, there's a power of God working in us, transforming us to be in the image of His Son. Amen? And so the second way we know that He's transformed us is by the way God guides us. We walk with God's peace. Before we did what we want, when we wanted, and we only had one rule, if it benefits us materially or helps our own selfish purposes, then that was a good enough reason. But now we are in Christ. Our goal is to please Him in everything that we do and to live a life that honors Him. Amen? And so we walk with God's guidance. Everything we do, small decisions, big decisions, we bring them before God and like Romans 12, it says, do not be conformed to the things of this world, but be transformed, proving God's will in your life. And so God's will is something that we are very much interested in. We want to follow God's will. We want to be in the job God wants us to be in. We want to marry the person God wants us to marry we want to serve in the church that he's called us to be in. So every decision, big or small, he's involved with. And that's important because we are called to live a life 
The spirit that is in us wants to please the Lord. And that's a sign. And so one of the ways he does that is through the peace of God. And we, we know that in Philippians 4, 6 and 7, it says, Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, every decision, every m- moment in life where you don't know which way I should go, bring everything in prayer and supplication and thanksgiving and let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So he guides us with his peace. As we bring our decisions to him, we understand that he will guide us. We know that Paul in in 2 Corinthians 2, verses 12, he was going to a place called Troas because an effective door for the gospel had opened up. But when he gets to the border, he has no peace. And why did he have no peace? He says because the spirit in him, and he was the spirit in him, there was no peace, but also his brother Silas was not there with him. And so he turns back and he goes to Macedonia. And it's amazing, isn't it, that God can use even your brother, your brother Silas, one of your fellow brothers or sisters in the church, that you so want them to be with you, that that could be enough for the Holy Spirit to prompt you not to go into that place. And God uses He knows us. He knows how we respond in different situations. So he guides us with his peace. And so we have this sensitivity to the Spirit. And we only want to do the things which he wants us to do. Are you with me? How many understand what I'm saying? There are times where you're about to make a decision, but you're restless because you don't feel that what the decision you're about to make is the right one, and so you just wait. You wait until God brings peace into that situation. And that's one of the ways that God guides us. And that's a sign that we are his children because we don't want to be those that do our own thing. And then thirdly, I'm going to jump into this one. We know that we are his and we've been transformed by the way in which we worship. God is looking for worshipers who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Christianity is not a hobby. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle of following Jesus, living to worship him. So we commit ourselves to his word. His word changes us. It fills us. And as the scripture says, it dwells in us richly. And as it dwells in us richly, we find there's a harvest in our hearts that we can't wait to get to church to be with our fellow, fellow believers because we can't wait to worship him. And because the Spirit of God in us yearns to be with others that love the Lord Jesus Christ. And so by the way that we worship him, and it, it says that right, right at the end, doesn't it? Admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in our hearts. And we find that was a hallmark of the early church. They had glad and sincere hearts. They broke bread together. They loved being with one another. And Jesus was lifted up in their midst. And they loved being together. How about you? Are you looking forward to the next worship service, the next time that we get together with God's people? Surely that is a sign that God has done something in our hearts. We see the same thing in Ephesians 5. 18, be filled with the Spirit, or we could say be clothed with the Holy Spirit. And as we are clothed in the Spirit, it says this, we speak to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in our hearts to the Lord. Amen. We know that we are His because we love to worship Him. We love spending time in His Word. And as we spend time in His Word, This builds up into a crescendo of worship and prayer and devotion to him. Amen. These are signs. Sign number three is the way in which we worship. Our words, our speech, the inclinations of our heart will overflow with thanksgiving and praise as as we engage in what God's called us to do, and that's to love him and to worship him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. 
Folks, it's a decision of our hearts to love anyone. Now, if, if you are married here, you can look at your, your wife or look at your husband. Um, and we know that you, may, maybe you did fall in love, but actually it was also a decision of the heart that you chose to love your husband or your wife. Are you with me? For those of you who are in arranged marriages, that's, that's God's redemption for your marriage because it's a choice of our hearts. And we, fall in, we choose to fall in love. Nobody ever falls in love. And it's the same just on their own without making a decision. We make a decision to continue loving and being with the person that we love. And it's the same in our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a decision of our heart. We committed our hearts to love him with all of our hearts, all of our soul, all of our strength for all of the days of our life. He bought us with a price. We are the bride of Christ and he gave himself for us. And so we grow in our love for him. Amen. And then the last one, I'm going to finish there. So get ready because we want to pray for us to be clothed in the Holy Spirit. Because I believe actually we don't pray enough for us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? Sometimes we just do it. We tick the box. One, one meeting a year, let's pray for people who've not been filled with the Spirit or spoken in tongues or whatever it is. But no, we need to be those who are continually filled with the Spirit. Anyway, I'm going off track. Number four, by the way we go about our daily lives, it says this right at the end of Colossians 3.17, whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Whatever we do, everybody say, whatever I do. Whatever I do, it must be in, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, something that would bring thanks to him, something that would bring praise to God and to the Father because of this action that I am doing. And if we were able to meditate on that verse and take that one verse and made that our philosophy for the rest of our life, we would find the blessing of God would be with us in a major, major way because we know that God is love. We know that he is kind. We know that he is compassionate. And so we have to say at times, is this action that I am doing, is it kind? Is it compassionate? Is it from a heart that has been transformed? Does it bring glory to Christ? The way that I spoke to my wife the other day, was that kind? Was that compassionate? The way that I speak to my children, the way that I speak about my work colleague, is it what Christ would do? Does it bring glory to him? And folks, we would find that we need to be those that need to be constantly clothed with the Holy Spirit because we know we have an enemy that wants to put the old clothes. And you know that when, when Lazarus came out of the grave, he was no longer dead, right? And so they said, remove those grave clothes. Those grave clothes are not fit for a person that's alive. And so the grave clothes had to go because now he's alive. And then they stuffed some food in his mouth because people who are alive have to eat as well. So, But those who are in Christ Jesus, those who are clothed in Christ Jesus, that are there are attitudes, there is clothing that we must remove. We're not to be clothed in anger. We're not to be clothed in the old sinful practices. Malice has to go. Obscene talk has to go. Anger has to go. All of these things and the clothes that were stained by them, they have to be laid aside. And so we put away the old man. And the Bible says that we are constantly, because he's renewed us and because I'm new on the inside, we now have access to the Holy Spirit and we have access to the kindness of God, the love of God, the gentleness of God, the compassion of God. Let's not kid ourselves that we are naturally compassionate. No, we are only compassionate because he's filled us with the Holy Spirit and his compassion, his love, his kindness is what comes in our hearts and through our hearts. Amen. Let's stand.
I believe there's a, a challenge to us tonight. In fact, what I want us to do, if we can have the worship team back, I'd love us to get out of the seats. Now, whether that means moving your chair, whatever it is, come in the middle, go on the side. If you want to move your chair out the way, just do that. But I want to start just by asking the Holy Spirit to come upon us tonight. Amen. And one of the things that we realize is is a constant thing. We are changed on the inside, but we are constantly putting aside wrong attitudes and things which inhibit us. And we find this. The Father wants to pour out the Spirit upon us even more than perhaps we want to receive. And Scripture tells us this. We're to give ourselves fully to the Lord. How do we receive more of the Spirit? First, we come to Him and say, Lord, I want to give myself fully to Him. Next, we recognize that He's a good Father that wants to give good gifts to His children and how much more the Holy Spirit. Thirdly, the Bible says, come to me and ask. And so we come to Him and ask. John 7, 37. And it says this, Come to me and drink. Come to me. If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. Thirdly, we're told to believe. The same way that we believe that he died for me and gave himself for me. And on the cross, if I put my trust in him, he will transform me the same way as we put our faith in Him and believe in Him, the Spirit will be poured out upon us. And then we're told to ask. And then lastly, we drink. Let's just open our hearts to Him right now. Just lift up your hands. Just acknowledge Him right now. And just say, Lord, I want to give myself fully to You. Just tell Him right now. Just tell him right now where you are, Lord. I want to give myself fully to you again. And if you are here and you've never given your life to Jesus, then we would love to speak to you at the end of the meeting. But right now, we are asking him, we are committing our hearts to him, and we're saying, Lord, we give ourselves to you. We give ourselves to you right now. Come, Holy Spirit. We give ourselves to you, Lord. The old way, the old attitudes, the old clothing, we put it aside right now. Sinful attitudes that sometimes we pick up those clothes again and again, those old clothes. But Lord, we know it doesn't produce the kind of life that you want us to have. But right now, Lord, we lay aside every wrong thinking, every wrong attitude, Anything that's stained with sin, we lay it aside and we give ourselves to you right now, Lord Jesus. And we say, come. Come, Lord Jesus. Lord, we recognize right now you're a good father. Just tell him right now, Lord, you're so good to me. You've got good plans for me. You're a good father. Your purposes for me are amazing. Lord God, I know that you've got every day of my life numbered in your book. Every day, Lord, you've got blessings that you want to pour out of me. Just tell him what a good father he is. He loves you. He loves you with an everlasting love. He chose you before the foundation of the earth. He is your father. And there's so many good things he wants to release in your life. Just tell him right now, Lord, you're a good father. And as you come to the father, he says, come to me, all you who are thirsty. Many tonight here, maybe you're dry. It's been a while since you received his presence. But just ask him right now. Say, Lord, I, I'm thirsty for you. I'm thirsty for you, Lord. I want to have a drink. Come and fill me with your presence. Come and fill me with your spirit tonight. Lord, I want to ask 
Begin to ask him right now, Lord, I put my faith in you and I believe that you want to fill me right now. Come Holy Spirit, we ask him right now, Lord, you are the baptizer. Come baptize me right now. Come fill me right now with your presence. I pray right now, come Holy Spirit. Just invite him to come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Come and clothe me. Come and clothe me. Just ask him right now to come and clothe you. I want to be clothed. Lord, I want to be fully clothed in the presence, the power, the love of God, the faithfulness of God, the gentleness of Christ, the humility of Christ. Lord, I want to be filled right now. Just tell him right now. thank you right now that your blood paid the price not only for my sin but also for me to be clothed in the Holy Spirit and to be clothed in righteousness and to be clothed with compassion and humility and I pray right now over every person in this room would you come upon us would you clothe us will you fill us will you anoint us release just release your presence right now. Your tangible presence. Let it come upon us right now. Just, just lift up your hands right now. Say, Lord, come, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How much you love him right now. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Fill me with your presence. Fill me from the top of my head to the bottom of my toes. I'm going to pray right now. Lord, I pray right now for every person in this place to begin to experience your presence in a deeper way. I pray from the top of their heads to the bottom of their toes, begin to release life right now. Begin to release your holy presence, your warm, holy presence. Let it be filled. Let each one be filled with your presence right now. Just begin to receive right now. Drink, drink. The last thing we are told to do after we've asked is to drink drink. Just drink in His presence. Open your hearts. Open your spirits and receive right now. Not from me, from the Holy Spirit and from Jesus. Just begin to drink right now. Just begin to drink. His presence is here. Drink in His goodness. Drink in His lovely presence. His holy presence. His peace, His love, His joy. Begin to drink in now. Receive. Just receive His presence right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence, Lord, in this place. We thank you for your presence. Lord, more. More of you right now. More of you in this place. More of your presence upon this church. More of your presence upon families, upon husbands and wives, more of your presence, Lord Jesus, in our workplace, more of your presence, Lord God, as I'm sitting in the morning reading your word, more of your presence as we worship you, Lord, we pray more right now, more of your presence, come and fill me, come and fill me, come and fill me right now, 
turn to the person next to you and I just want you to pray pray for the release of God's presence upon the person next to you and then pray for then you pray for them pray for each one to be clothed right now clothed with the Holy Spirit anointed by the Holy Spirit filled with undescribable anointing of Christ we are clothed with Christ. We are clothed in his presence. Just pray right now for more of God. And as they pray, receive. Receive fresh anointing. Be free. Receive your clothing of Christ right now. <laughs> 